Hello everyone. Being effective with outreach to the media and other external stakeholders is important for any organization. In nonprofits, it is critical and can make a difference in acquiring the necessary resources for growth. In Module 9, we discussed effective practices of outreach, marketing, and public relations, discussed their role, and explored some successful examples. With so many nonprofit organizations out there, what makes them stand out? How does a nonprofit grow from that community's hidden asset to become one that is prominent in media and in the minds of people everywhere? Certainly, resources help, but the reality is that most nonprofits start out as small, mission driven organizations founded with the desire to make a difference in some capacity. Along the way, the organization experiences successes and setbacks while remaining consistent and true to their mission. Over time, however, the nonprofit begins to be known for its consistency and its longevity, despite any organizational, programmatic, or even leadership changes. Now, the practice of marketing, public relations, and external communication can vary. Whether a nonprofit uses formal communications channels and has a whole team dedicated to uh, just the communications function, or if it is just word of mouth and social media, the function is still the same, getting the word out. In one of the discussions this week, I was intrigued by a point brought up about the use of celebrity and how celebrity endorsements are used. One author even uh, in the research coined a new phrase for the marriage of celebrity and philanthropy. Salanthropy. I'm sure we could all think of many salanthropists. Uh, interestingly, the reverse is also a peculiar, uh, peculiar phenomenon, where some philanthropists are treated like celebrities. All that aside, I want, us, uh, I want to bring us back to the question that predominates this class. What is the role of the leader when it comes to this aspect of the organization? Should an executive director of a nonprofit organization be the face of the nonprofit? Or should the mission and the programs drive it regardless of who is leading? It's an interesting question to ask um, and one that I believe doesn't get asked enough. Furthermore, if in fact a nonprofit leader does have strong skills and competencies in this arena, how much of his or her time should be devoted to the externals and how much should be on the day-to-day -day operational aspect? Hmm. I'd like to know what you think of these questions and perhaps you want to discuss this. Nonetheless, there are so many effective practices and the principles of good marketing and outreach apply to both the for as well as the nonprofit organization. Well, what is important for nonprofit organizations ultimately is acknowledging that outreach is just as important as any other aspect of its operation and learning to strategize, to plan for and execute outreach, however big or small it may be, can mean all the difference in the world. Next week is our final module together and you'll have a chance to put all this together personally. The topic is self-reflection, and in looking back at this class, what has made the most impact on you as a leader in the nonprofit sphere? This will be very evident as you turn in your last paper, the Leadership Framework. In that paper, you will look introspectively at what does leadership mean for you? What do you believe are the styles, the behaviors, and ethical considerations that are critical for good leadership in the nonprofit space. You'll consider our various topics and elaborate on that question. So what do all these things have to do with leadership? It will be a fun and exciting week, so I look forward to it. With that, as always, be sure to discuss things through the weekend. Contact me with any questions, and I will see you online.